Hello, Silver fans. This is T, and you're in the place to be for silver education, acquisition, and entertainment. Hey, the place to be is Smith's in Lafayette, Indiana. If you like coin shop videos, be sure to subscribe. I make a whole bunch of them. T. Okay, Shell, hey, thanks again uh, for uh, having me back to the shop. And I uh, really appreciate the time. And uh, there's Mr. Smith making a quick cameo. He's a little camera <laughs> shy. Uh, but uh, thanks uh, for having me back. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for coming back in. It's great uh, to have you here again. My pleasure. The good news is uh, the last time I was here, my daughter's team was trying to qualify for the state tournament for Science Olympiad. Awesome. And they did it. They uh, came in second place. Great. Which uh, gave them a bid to uh, compete in, uh, at Purdue which is where she's at right now and that's why i'm here today great so um hey i'm going to ask you some questions i didn't ask you last time and some sure. of them are going to be a little bit out of the blue uh, i'd like to start by talking about american silver eagles i was uh watching i woke up this morning flipping through the channels in my hotel and uh, i saw one of those home shopping networks and the gentleman he was selling eagles uh bu 70s uh for 69.95 and so i know you and your dad have been in this business quite a while and i've been collecting coins for a long time i've been going to coin shops for a long time right um and i remember back in the day you'd go buy eagles it was simply considered a bullion coin right and at some point in time somebody somewhere decided to slab the first eagle ever and now we're all looking at graded uh, bullion coins, right. the American Silver Eagles, and right. it's even expanded to others. Right. Do you remember when that happened and how that was received by the public? I don't, um, because for us, especially around here, mm -hmm. we have a few people that will collect the graded Silver Eagles, mm -hmm. but for the most part, the people we have coming in want to put them either in books mm -hmm. or they're just stacking them. And if they're stacking them, they don't care if they're in a slap. Right. Now, I know there are people that want, you know, the perfect coin. They're putting together registry sets or whatever. They're mm -hmm. going to want them in, in Mint State 70. Okay. With the modern coinage, so much of that stuff coming out of the Mint in, in the uncirculated eagles like that, they're either going to be 68, 69, 70. That's going to be the grouping usually. If you send in a roll, you're going to get a few 68s, a big chunk of 69s, and a few 70s. Mm -hmm. So the 70s do command a premium. I have a couple of guys mm -hmm. that collect them in 70s. The rest of them, they don't care. Yeah. They, you know, they want to come in and buy their their bullion eagle. They'll buy one a year for the kids, the grandkids, or the stack. Yeah. So when it started. I honestly don't know. Well, maybe I, I would have to look it up. <laughs> I've got an awesome group of viewers uh, right. that watch my uh, channel faithfully. Maybe one of them knows. I think they probably would. Uh, I bet you know, they will. Yeah. I bet they will. Uh, especially with my age demographics, uh, somebody might remember that. Maybe it was before your time. <laughs> <laughs> um, I doubt it, unfortunately. <laughs> I doubt it, but uh, possibly. Now, rated coins used to kind of be reserved for older coins of great numismatic value right right your dad showed me one just a minute ago yes, you have he it did. in your hand yes there. he did I will, i'll let uh, you get a close-up on that i will show uh, i'll show a picture of this a little better detail um but uh it is a capped bust yes and capped bust half dollar it's the 1807 and it's the overton 111 okay which is one of the rare varieties so that makes that's something you'd want to have graded. Yes. Um, you send it in with the variety attribution. That makes a huge difference in the price between a regular one and this variety. Can so, you explain that a little bit, the variety attribution? <laughs> with the old capped bust half dollars and some of the other coins, there were different die pairings. Okay. Because they'd have you know X number of obverse dies, X number of reverse dies. Somebody has gone to all the trouble to catalog all the different die pairings mm -hmm. on the different coins struck, and those die pairings can make a difference in the prices okay, on so how rare they are. It's kind of like a fingerprint. You could tell from the die pairing uh, details about the various coins and... Right. Interesting. 
Uh, and so what's the value on a coin like that? This particular one retails for $6,000. Wow, so that's a special coin there. That is a special that's, coin right that's there. That's definitely <laughs> uh, you know, slab worthy. Yes, uh, yes. <laughs> kind of like the kind of like the 1909 SVDB or the 16D dime. Mm -hmm. Those are coins that you want to have graded to prove authenticity. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, there's on rare coins like that, there are a boatload of counterfeits. Mm. So a lot of guys, if you know the die characteristics of the coin, you can buy one and guarantee yourself that it's authentic without having it slabbed, if you know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. If not, buy it certified, because then you've got a grading company that says, hey, yeah, this is a real one, it's mm -hmm. not a fake. Yeah. Those coins graded, yeah, mo the modern stuff, <laughs> You know, unless it's an error or something that's going to jump drastically in price from this grade to this grade, mm -hmm. then yeah, grade it. Otherwise, you know, yeah. <laughs> some coins are worthy of slabs, some are not. Yeah, and you know, we've all learned along the way. I mean, I I, I did things a couple of years ago that I wouldn't do now, like right. buy 69 graded bullion coins. Uh, yeah. But, um, oh well, I, last time I saw you was two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. A lot's happened in the world since then. Oh my, uh, has it ever. Yeah, uh, Russia hadn't invaded yet, and since then uh, things have gone a little bit crazy. Yep. Uh, and uh, in the short time I've been in your shop, in 15 minutes, uh, you know, you've had four or five customers already and the phone ringing and everything else. Right. Yep. Tell me what the last couple of weeks have been like. <sighs> The last couple of weeks have been nuts. Um, a lot of people are nervous. Obviously, you've watched fuel prices jump as much as I have. Oh boy. Everybody's nervous. Um, a lot of gold and silver buying right now. Um, obviously, transferring wealth from one platform to another mm -hmm. for safety reasons, I'm sure. And now, I can see it. Now, with the spot price going up, uh, are people buying because of FOMO? They want to get it now while they can? Or are, are people coming in to sell now since it's gone up a bit? I've had a few selling. Mostly they're buying right now and I think they're they're diversifying. A lot of them are wanting to diversify. Um, I think they're nervous about what their stocks are going to do. Mm -hmm. I think they're nervous about what the U.S. dollar is going to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so they want to they want to put their money somewhere safe mm -hmm. and, and that would be metals. Mm -hmm. Your personal collection, do you have a personal collection or like something that... I have a few pieces. Okay. <laughs> your, your favorites of the favorite. I mean, you see so much stuff oh, through, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, through the and, door. And I've, you know, I've... It, usually the ones that wind up in my stash are things that catch my eye. Uh -huh. um, I like, I don't know if you've seen them, the, the old Encoost Indian, the, the gold, oh, yeah. the two and a half and five oh, gold yeah. Indians. Those are beautiful. Some say the most beautiful coin. I love we've them. Ever that made. is my favorite design ever. Mm -hmm. And they actually make them in a frosted silver piece that I absolutely love. Okay. So I've probably got a couple of those one ounce sitting around mm -hmm. and, and some little bars and whatnot, but I don't have a huge stash. I need to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as far as the buying side of things, is there a particular item that walks in the door that you're really happy to see and when someone opens up a bag and or a box and says hey i have these to sell the you"? the old collector coins the the keys to the sets okay. are are what you know really pique our interest because there's still a high demand for them mm -hmm. the 09 sbdbs the 16d mercury dimes um of course any of the old cap bust stuff mm -hmm. um i'm trying to think it's flying eagle sense mm -hmm. um well, or even some of the old uh, currency, like the Lazy Deuces and the $10 gold certificates. Mm -hmm. They're just, the old currency is absolutely beautiful. I noticed you have some in the yes. shop there. Yes, and it's oh, stunning. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Especially I've, when they're still, you well, know, I'm, crisp and beautiful and still have all their ink colors well, from, well, mm -hmm. you know, the original printings. They haven't faded. They're magnificent stuff, pieces. They're mm -hmm. artwork. Great. Yeah, yeah, they truly they, are. The old mm -hmm. notes were artwork. Yeah. That's great, dude. Now, let me ask you, uh, kind of back to what we started talking about before, some of the reasons uh, people uh, stack. Uh, you and I are both people of great faith. We won't get into all that right now, but we, you know, we both know that no man knows when the end of the world is coming. Right, exactly. Uh, but uh, do you have your share of 
preppers who are preparing for societal breakdown? Yes, and I think those are the ones that are stacking a lot of the old, what they call constitutional silver or the old 90%, mm -hmm. dimes, quarters, halves. Some that come in every week and the put a little bit in silver. Are 12 and yeah, much. exactly for that reason. Mm -hmm. um, I like the mercury dimes myself just yep. because it's the smallest. Yep. Well, and the, and the Roosevelt's too, but there's Mercury Dimes, Barber Dimes, the Roosevelt Dimes before, you know, 1964 and before. Yep, I'll they're the little pieces, and that the Mercury Dimes have the prettiest design. So. <laughs> and, uh, now, we're here on a Saturday yeah, afternoon, <laughs> and one of my favorite things one, to do in a coin shop, obviously, 50, in addition to looking at beautiful coins and buying yeah, 50, 50, stuff, 50, 50, whether it's 12, generics yeah. or coins or what have you, uh, just the chatter. That oh, you yeah. hear, and oh, just yeah. uh, just a minute ago, oh, a gentleman was here saying he heard oh, a rumor man. that the Comex was going to be shut down on Monday. And, and I haven't had a chance to look, so that's something that I'm going to investigate a little bit later. Yeah, he saw it like, maybe on Reddit. I think is what yeah, you I mentioned. Yeah, he said Reddit. And if that would happen, uh, the old man here <laughs> said that would be a big deal. Yeah. And a game changer for the world. Yeah. But. It's interesting what you can hear in oh, a coin yeah. shop. It's kind of oh, like yeah. going to a barber shop or something. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Let me ask you about security, and feel free to decline this question if you'd like, but obviously you have a lot of valuables here. Um, you take security very seriously. Oh, yes. If somebody came here with ill will, I think they would be met with strong resistance. Yes, <laughs> and probably a lot of red and blues very quickly. Okay. Okay, we'll, we'll end that conversation. <laughs> uh, yeah, because they don't want to meet the red and blues, trust me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I noticed uh, your uh, supply is uh, significantly less than last time. People on, is, a, is, on a few things, it's yeah. It's been crazy. Oh, yes. Uh, do you have more shipments coming in? Uh, oh, yeah. We, we always have stuff ordered. I do know in talking to my wholesaler that with especially like the one ounce silvers and 10 ounce silver bar, the lead time is starting to extend. Mm -hmm. It's at one to three weeks on one size and out to eight weeks on another size. Mm -hmm. So I, he's got stuff already coming through, mm -hmm. but as they order more, it's extending out further. So. Oh. The, um, the, the supply is, is not meeting the demand at the moment. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Uh, that, and I think a lot of the world is waking up to what many of my viewers have known for oh, yeah. a long period of time. So Well, and this happened back during the housing market crash back in mid-2000s, what, 2008, 9, 10, 11, 12, right mm -hmm. in there. Yeah. The same thing happened. Mm -hmm. The demand was there, the product wasn't, and we had massive lead times at that time, too. Mm -hmm. Well, listen, I see another guy getting ready to come in the door. He's coming, getting out of his car right now. You've got, you've been so gracious. Thank oh, you for welcome. taking the time. Anytime. And uh, I will uh, end it with that, uh, just simply saying thanks for the time. Oh, you're welcome, T. Come back and see us anytime. Oh, and I'm going to do some shopping. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Ah, look at this glorious bin of generics. Oh, yeah. Okay, hey, before I show you what I got today, just a quick shout out to these channel members and a special thank you to everybody for watching to this point in the video. All right, here's what I got. An Indiana bar uh, for an Indiana stacker. A beautiful horse, round and honest value, never fails. Always a great round. And speaking of rounds, let's round it out with this. Uh, Libertad replica right here from the year 2000. Hey, thanks again for watching, everybody. Mm -hmm.